We're back on a Friday morning and we're here at one of my favorite shows. This is Trump Week because, you know, everybody has a duty to understand what's going on. And I don't mean to just listen to all the propaganda that comes out of the White House, but to understand what's going on. That's our mission here. So there's three hosts here. <laughs> Tim Apicella, and Cynthia Sinclair and me, Jay. And uh, today we're going we're gonna to look at it on, the, on, the, on our given Friday. We're going to see what's happened this week. And I'm going to let Tim call the agenda, okay? What's first in Trump Week today? Well, I think we should talk about the State of the Union address. Okay. So, um, one of the longest ones, uh, hour and 20 minutes. Certainly not um, short and snappy. Oh, that's long. And, you know, it was filled with a, a, you know, a variety of different twists and turns. Um, certainly some of them expected and many of them not. I, I think the one that, you know, was hitting the headlines, of course, with the quote was, um, if there is going to be peace and legislation, there cannot be war and investigation. Snappy little rhyme, isn't it? But, uh, you know, when I heard that, I said, okay, that sets the tone. That sets the agenda. He's not making peace it's at all. That's a threat. It's a, it's a threat. threat. Yeah, yeah, it's a threat. threat. And, and I, I've heard that in many, many commentators, is that to the extent that he suggested there be, um, you know, collaboration, he also suggested there would be war. Mm -hmm. So it's... It, I would like to say it neutralizes itself, but it doesn't. At the end of the day, it comes out to war. It's nothing has changed. Right. Do you agree with what I said? Yeah. I nothing totally has agree. Changed. And he said it twice. He didn't just say it once. Yeah. He reiterated it to really drive home his point. Yeah. I mean, he, there were, you know, these little olive branches of, you know, conciliatory, let's work together. Um, let's work together. We did work together with the crime uh, reform bill. And, you know, so there was these little olive branches that we did get some things done on a bipartisan basis. That doesn't mean that's where he's going forward from this point. No, he still wants what he wants. He hasn't, he hasn't capitulated on anything. Right. He's still I, pushing well, for the wall, too. Oh, yeah. And I noticed a tone, a change in the tone of his voice when he's d throughout the speech. And when he's those conciliatory offerings, he has this very sarcastic kind of wry yeah, tone to true? his I've voice also. when he's saying something that's not true. Well, he doesn't mean it. So and when he doesn't mean it, it shows in his voice. He doesn't mean anything. He's, it's like he's being forced to say it. Right. Yes. Well, that's the teleprompter yes. of Donald Trump. Yeah. And once he gets steers off the teleprompter, we start seeing the real Donald Trump. Right. That's is, why they are mortified to say, stay on prompter. Right. 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 <laughs> Last week, you uh, <clears throat> headed home to look up the word the narcissist. What did you find? Well, narcissism is a really large thing that, you know, all of us have a little bit of in ourselves because it stems mostly from um, profound insecurity. And the ones that are really profoundly insecure are the ones that need to control everything around them the most. They cannot admit that anything is their fault. They always have to have a scapegoat in place. They are bullies. Um, all the things that we see in Trump, but I think he takes it one step further. Yeah. Um, I think he goes into that, okay, I've said this all along from the very first show, the projection that he does, which is when you're doing something, you accuse somebody else of it. And I have seen it repeatedly throughout. We all have. The, yeah, the time, his time in office. And just the other day, Nancy Pelosi actually stood up from the dais and said it said that he's a projector, and and that's what he is. And in my mind, and I'm saying the same thing I've sort of said all along, which is we need to sort of judge everything that comes out of his mouth by that theory of is he just projecting? Is he really doing it when he's pointing to somebody else and saying that they're doing it? That's something that he's doing. <clears throat> yeah. so, uh, some people feel that it goes beyond, um, you know, these uh, textbook psychology. Yes, and I think it does. And it's, it's pathological. It's pa completely pathological. pathological. And I think uh, it's a, he's, a, he's sort of a classic sociopath. And I don't understand why main media does not talk about it. This, hearing Nancy Pelosi the other day was the first time I really heard somebody. Well, hopefully It's the new will. frontier that the media doesn't want to go into. Right. It's, it's, it's what it was to Franklin Roosevelt when he had to use crutches from the car, and they would never show him actually, you know, on crutches. They wouldn't right. touch it. 
This right. is no different now. Is mental illness is something that they don't want to go down that road right. and actually say this may be contributory to the bizarre behavior we get from the commander in chief <laughs> and the, right. the bizarre policy switches back and forth. Um, and that's something they don't want to do. So I, I come away, I didn't watch the whole thing because I, I actually couldn't, I could not bring myself to watch the whole thing. Uh, but I come away with, a, you know, it was, um, it was uh, hebephrenic in the sense it was jumping from one thing to another. Right. And it was all the schmaltz, like uh, he commuted the sentence of some woman who'd been in jail, shouldn't have been in jail. What has that got to do with the State of the Union? Um, right. He was, all the schmaltz he was bringing in, uh, you know, to stroke people, make, maybe make his base feel that he had a real heart. We know he doesn't have a real heart. Um, at the same time, you know, his, his position um, remains the same right. and his, uh, his patho pathology remains the same. So right. I, I think, you know, at the end of the day, and I'll take this out of, I think it was the time said, it didn't make any difference. I agree. Because it didn't change anybody's mind. Right. Well. Uh, do you have any th well, thoughts on I, that? I thought it was the first time when we had a, a midterm election that was the biggest seats gained since uh, right after Nixon's departure. Yeah. Um, we had that kind of results in the House of Representatives. Yeah. And it's the first time a president did not acknowledge a change of political flavor. You know, flavor. You know we had... Um, 1995, uh, George Bush, excuse me, 2007, George Bush had to admit that, you know, he, the midterms didn't work out well for him. Clinton had to do it in 95, and certainly Barack Obama did. So here's no acknowledgement of a change and shift. And in this case, when it came to the House of Representatives, a mandate. It yeah. was a mandate. And he, yeah. not one word to acknowledge in the, uh, you know, State of the Union address of that mandate. Alternative universe. Right. That's yeah. what it is. It's not the same right. world we live in. Okay, what's next on your agenda? Well, um, a couple of other points is that, you know, we're talking about the announcement of North Korea and the, the meeting that's going to take place. Mm. Um, we'll see if that is any more of an impact. I did get a kick out of the quote that um, he said, if I hadn't been elected, we would be right now, in my opinion, oh, in a major war with North Korea. Now, is that the narcissist part yeah. that's coming out in Donald Trump? That he, that he would have started. Right. You know, I mean, I think we, we, we are at risk around the world we are. to become embroiled in more wars than you could shake a stick at. He talks about pulling out of, you know, un untimely pulling out of uh, Syria. Right. Um, he talks about changing the, 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 the players and the geopolitical positions in, in um, you know, in the Middle East. But the fact is, we, it seems to me, I don't know how you guys feel about it, we are at greater risk of, of, a, of war, including Absolutely a, a conflagration. Uh, under his kind of foreign policy. I well, think he wants that. Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm <laughs> going to shift gears a little bit, but, you know, this, this, this rhetoric about, you know, being staged in Iraq and oh, to right. keep eyes on Iran. Well, we know that the Iraq government didn't know this. Um, you know, when he visited that area in Christmas time, he made, you know, similar overtures that Iraq is this going to become a satellite base for us to keep an eye on Syria, keep an eye... We didn't specifically mention Iran that time. But the point is, he's setting the stage for potential conflict yes. when it's convenient for him. Because remember, it's the distraction of the distraction. Right. And all these different places in the world can easily be a tinderbox and be the new distraction to get away from what? Yeah. Mueller's investigation. Right. right. That's the whole idea. So he's setting the, the chess, he's setting the chessboard up. Yeah. Um, and, and we're talking about what's going to happen in Venezuela. Is he going to send some troops on the border there? Oh I mean, my God. you know, I'm just saying that, you know, look for the distraction. If you keep making threats, one of these days you get into a fight. That's correct. You know? Well, I think he's wanted to create, had to sort of instigate some kind of war or, you know, skirmish battle, something anyway, from what he does in our own country to pit. American against American. Yeah, it's a scape, and then, scapegoat battle is what it yeah, is. Well, he can one. become more powerful if he can step in and say, look what I did. And that's what he's all about. Yeah. And then, the, and I always heart back to martial law, that, you know, um, if he declares a national emergency that is too close to martial law and gives him wide scoping power. I was worried he was going to do that in the State of the Union, but he didn't. I, I was couldn't. surprised. Were you surprised? I was surprised that he didn't. I, I, I didn't feel that confident that he was going to do it, but it would not have surprised me had he done it. Put it that so way. doesn't that paint him further in the corner if he's going to hold out for the, the um, well, $5.7 hey, One he's week from today, it. boys and girls, is the end of the, uh, of the uh, interim shutdown agreement not right. to shut down. 
And so we're going to go back and shut down country on, on the 15th. That's one week from today. Right. But didn't uh, his State of Ad Union address paint him further into that corner? It did. It did. It did. Right. Yeah. He's still threatening. He threatened but, it in sort of in. He didn't actually declare it, but he was threatening it. He said, I can do it. Well, how's he going to get out of it now that he can't declare a national emergency? Well, another distraction. That's what it'll be. Yeah. What about immigration? Anything happening with immigration? Lots is happening well, with immigration. Unfortunately. They've just... Um, got proof now with this next last report that came out that says that they were separating families before they actually declared that um, the zero tolerance. So they were there's already thousands of kids. They don't know the exact number. They don't have a database. They don't have a database. They, they don't didn't know. set one up. No. They had no intention of reunification. No, they of didn't. Ch child to parent. Just punishment. Pun punish everybody in sight. Um, make them sweat, make them suffer. That's what happened here. And anybody could have seen that coming. And no database. And where did the kids with go? With young kids who can't even identify themselves. Where did they go? They're not. And, <coughs> and to say country. that they're they just in foster, the and to see that they're just in foster care doesn't make any sense either, no, no. because there are hundreds of thousands of American children in foster care that can't get foster homes. Right. So you're going to tell me they were able to just place all of these uh, little Hispanic Probably kids in, in little enclosures with cyclone fences. Well, here's the problem sold we, for somewhere. the Trump administration is that this report came out of the administration of the Office of Inspector General Gover Government Accountability Office. And so this is an official report put out by the administration about the thousands of kids that were separated before right. the zero tolerance policy was announced back in uh, June 14th, 2018. Now, I'm just gonna take a little whirlwind here, just real quick one, is how was the zero tolerance policy announced by Jeff Sessions? Does anyone remember? Oh, I don't think it was announced. It was. Well, wait, ready? wait, wait, and he even cited the Bible That's saying a, that he was justified. Here you got it, it? Oh, yep. good. I would cite to you the Apostle Paul in his clear and wise command in Romans 13 to obey the laws of the government because God has ordained them for the purpose of order. June 14, 2018, oh, Jeff Sessions. Gosh. So when you use God or you invoke <sighs> the word of God to basically validate any horrible policy that you implement upon people, whether they're citizens of the United States or non-citizens of the United States, right. that's deplorable. I'm sorry. It is, absolutely. And, and this Beyond. whole policy of separating child from parents is something I can't imagine the United States has ever done. I mean. World War II, we did incarcerate Japanese Americans, and that was very morally wrong. We didn't separate families. We didn't separate families. Not separate families. Uh, let's take a short break, you guys. We'll come back and we'll cover more points, including my personal favorite one involving Jeff Bezos. Uh huh. We'll be right back. Aloha, I'm Yukari Kunisue, the host of Konnichiwa Hawaii, Japanese talk show on ThinkTech Hawaii. Konnichiwa Hawaii is all Japanese broadcast show. And it's streamed live on ThinkTech at 2 p.m. every other Monday. Thank you so much for watching our show. We look forward to seeing you then. I'm Yukari Kunise. Mahalo. I'm Jay Fidel of ThinkTech. Our flagship energy show among the six energy shows we have is Hawaii, the state of clean energy. It plays every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Come around and see us. Learn about energy. Keep current on energy on thinktechhawaii.com. We're back with Trump Week, okay? And that's Tim Apicella and Cynthia Sinclair, and I'm Jay Fidel. And every Friday at uh, 11 o'clock, we talk about what happened in the past week on, on Mr. Trump. And I don't know if we completely finished the possibility of another shutdown. Um, that would yeah. really be Looney Tunes, and it, it's in his control yet again. Right. And if he does another shutdown, uh, he runs the risk of losing uh, defectors from the Republican Party, don't you think? Uh, how is he doing? Are there defections? Are there flaws and cracks and fractures in the Republican Party these days? I would hope so. I would no. hope that these people can take their blinders off and spit out the Kool-Aid and actually look at the facts because the facts speak for themselves. And the behavior is obvious. And to, I don't understand how people can justify what's happening. I don't understand how the high-ranking Republicans in the Senate can justify it. I was watching them interview uh, Whitaker today in at in Congress, right? And the Republicans are just they just like puff him up and and you know give him all these compliments and don't even ask him real questions. 
And then as soon as the Democrats start to ask him really hard pointed questions, you know, did you talk to Washington, anyone in the White House about what you have learned about the Mueller investigation? And he wouldn't answer it. Yeah. He just, you know, gives these crazy skirting things. Well, that, that sounds like the Trump administration. Nobody answers yeah. your yeah, question. Yeah, nobody answers oh, your question. I, I think the cracks, the cracks were happening before the last shutdown, and they certainly were there after story after story after story of the horrific um, trials and tribulations the government workers were going through to pay, put food right. on the table to pay the bills, the whole thing. Right. They didn't need that. That was not. That was a black eye for the Rep Republican Party. I agree. And I know for a fact that they don't want to see it again. Because right. many of those senators are coming up for election in, in red, purple states, and um, they're losing the, the they're losing the popularity of the wall because of the shutdown, and they don't want to right. see that again. So I, I right. you will see them come out. Right. I hope so. I hope so. Uh, it's my prediction. I may be wrong, but it's my prediction. Well, um, I hope so too. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know what's what's what what troubles me a lot is the whole thing about the press, because the press uh, right. has been. It's been changed. It's been morphed in some ways since this administration began. Um, right. Lying to the press on a regular basis, criticizing the press, telling people that the press is the enemy of right. the people. And this is hor horrific um, because, as the Washington Post says in its tagline, the democracy dies in darkness. Right. And, and we have now a, a, a confusion about what's true and what's not true. Who do you believe? Right. Um, and, and, and the press itself is suffering. So like the story that came out uh, just yesterday about Jeff Bezos, let me see if I can state what happened. <clears throat> Jeff Bezos, apparently he's he getting divorced or he got divorced. Um, and there was a woman that he was, mm, he was seeing, having an affair with. Um, and there were photographs and somehow the uh, National Enquirer got those photographs and got some data about this. And they threatened Be Oh, and Bezos, was real concerned about how this leaked because somebody yeah. got it. So, uh, social media or somebody in his organization, so, I don't know where, but he wanted to find out where it had leaked to the National Enquirer. And they said something like, uh, if you pursue that, this, this inquiry into how it leaked, we're going we're gonna to put, put it public. Um, and what he did was he put it public. Which right. I, I know, I love that. He right proactively <laughs> got ahead of it. Yeah. He says, if I can't stand up to it, who can? Who can? And he called it, well, I think what it is, right. uh, is, is, is blackmail and extortion. That's right. That's they exactly extorted what it him, is. you know, about the news. And so what you have is, is flat out corruption within the media, assuming you call the National Enquirer media. Uh, wow. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. Uh, yeah. you, you, have, you have corruption within the media. It's very scary now. The media yeah. fighting with itself. I mean, you know, uh, with the way people would see it. Um, right. and, 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 and doing crimes and blackmail and extortion kind of crimes against it. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and you don't know if there's more of that behind the, behind the curtain. Well, what scares but, me, or makes me laugh, not scares me, um, the parent company of the Enquirer said, we'll investigate this. Yeah, right. Really? <laughs> sure. sure. Now, this well. is the same you know, media outlet that announced that I married Bat Boy. And that was a front page, full page article back in the 1980s. No credibility at all. I married Bat Boy. So I'm not sure to what degree, you know, the Enquirer. Well, what, see, what troubles me right. is that there's a connection between Pecker and Trump. Well, there's... Well, the you, there is one. Well, they, you know, they captured the, um, you know, the, the two salacious stories about him dating porn stars, you know. Yeah. And the, you know, the Playboy. The uh, Playboy yeah. bunny, right. They have a long-term relationship. Their names don't come to mind, but, you know, that was a capture and burn uh, approach. And that works hand in hand with Donald Trump. And that's already been proven. He's already direct payments. And, you right. know, this, this, this line has already been more or less flushed out in the spotlight. So what you don't know, what we don't know is if this whole affair with the extortion and blackmail that Bezos is complaining about came from the White House. Because uh, Trump, uh, there was some indication that Trump might uh, uh, pardon uh, Pecker for, for crimes. Um, and that's really sleazy if it came from the White House. Well, Remember, in, in his business career, Trump was always trying to manipulate the press. Right. Even using phony names as sources right. back in New York. Well, if what? Bezos wasn't his arch enemy, you know, I wouldn't be so inclined to, to be suspicious of that very thing. Well, but, I mean, who else is going to go after him? 
I mean, lots of people because he's, you know, multi. Well, the thing is that if richest you, if you guy look at the, the, the three papers that are speaking out, uh, maybe four, that are affirmatively every day speaking out against Trump, uh, right. the New York Times, okay, the Washington Post, Washington. owned by yep. Bezos, yep. Uh, the Guardian, the Guardian. Uh, really very good, and something right. called, I've been watching, the Daily Cost, K-O-S. Um, you know, they, and they have lots of stories about him, and uh, yeah. it's you got to look at this stuff. Uh, right. But what, what troubles me is that here he's creating this whole attack on Jeff Bezos, and he's attacked Bezos before, yes, right? Has, um, yeah. Through Pecker, through the National Enquirer, right? Uh, and you know, to me, it sounds like a way to undermine uh, and threaten the press who attacks him. Well, right. you know, he used Fox and Friends, and he's used Fox News as his mouthpiece as well. Right. In fact, um, back in November 26, 2018, Donald Trump proposed a state-run news agency. That's so Because he, he criticized CNN for being a powerful voice in the world, but it's unfair and false, and he's something has to be done about it, and that includes the possibility of starting an own worldwide network to show the world the way we really are. Great. Oh, wow. Okay, so... Um, you know, there is something called Voice of America. We only kind of have a pseudo kind of news agency that does translate around the world. It's the grandchild of um, Radio Free Europe. So that already sort of exists. But he wants to start a, news, a new news agency to be the mouthpiece for what Donald Trump thinks is his greatness. And um, the Homeland Security uh, Office announced that it was keeping a list of all journalists that's right. A matrix, a database of all journalists in the country who ever speak on political issues. And it was including in that list, in that database, their positions on things, namely whether they attack Trump or, or not. Nixon right. had a list. Yeah, he did. Right. I, I mean, noticed the difference for me. It's very scary when you start listing, including, you know, uh, positions on journalists in the country. Ever since I've been on this show, my Facebook feed goes out to no one. It has, <laughs> I mean, drastically Absolutely. changed. And maybe, you know, I'm just, you know, maybe it's coincidence, but I don't know. Because I would have, you know, maybe upwards of a little over 100 people that I'm close friends with from high school and, and different jobs and things. And they would always, that's how I would get my good numbers for my show, Finding Respect in the Chaos and stuff. And every single show, I would get these great responses. Now I get three. I get four. I'm like, who's looking at my stuff? Nobody. So I went and did, you know, direct messages to all my friends. And they're like, I haven't seen your posts in, you know, about a month. And I'm thinking, oh, about the same amount of time I've been doing this show. That's interesting. Well, you know, we only have a couple of minutes left. And oh, I, I wanted to ask you guys a question about, about where it's going. Mm. You know, because part of our job here is to connect the dots. Uh, how right. was it, say, in the, in the inauguration of 2017? How is it now? How is the relationship with the press then and now? Mm. How is uh, the government doing then and now? How are the courts doing? Uh, what, what's your sense? Pick a, pick a thread and tell me how, how do you think it's going? Well, my thread is I remember distinctly after the inauguration and people weren't sure about who Donald Trump was. They thought he was going to be able to transform to the office. He was going to elevate to the office. Um, that was two years ago. And I remember distinctly people saying, uh, let's give him 100 days. Well, we're way past 100 days, and that. he has not risen to the, the, no. the, the mantle of the office. No. He's, he's sunk below subterranean well, we of get the to, office. We get to find he's followed him. Putin's playlist is yeah. what he's and, done and, and, and walked so right the down the line, and the state TV thing, or state news agency, is another one of yeah, the pieces I'm, in that puzzle. I'm concerned about that connection, and I think a lot of Americans are, and the thread right. is we have to be vigilant and keep an eye on that thread to make sure it doesn't accelerate here with um, distractions. Right. Distractions or, or head-on collisions. Uh, head-on collisions. With the Attorney General right. and all that, acting or otherwise. <clears throat> so, yeah, how is the Mueller investigation? Uh, where, where are we on that? When is well, it coming out? Well, Give according me the day to, it's coming out. And according to Whitaker, it's coming out very soon, which is something he never should have said in public and he's getting a lot of flack for. We have no idea when it's going to be done. I don't done. know how it can come out when Roger Stone is. It's just been, been delayed. Do just, you that for yeah, the last week? it's not going to come out until all these new pieces have fallen into place. Um, Congress, that I mean, the House just sent their stuff over to Mueller, so he's got all this new stuff that's just come in because remember the Republicans wouldn't let it go over there before. They well, wouldn't send it, it, their. 
Steph, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. no, go ahead. It just may be a checklist of things he already knows. Right. And it's just to say, oh, I have one more piece to validate what I already have on my table. Right. So I'm yeah. not sure it's going to be new leads for him to follow. Yeah. Um, more so than this check mark, check mark. Oh, yeah, right. You know. Well, here's, here's, here's a, a thread that I would like you guys to comment on. And that is when we started out with this, um, Trump was, uh, you know, enjoying a lot of press. Okay. But these days, he enjoys the whole thing. It's the whole enchilada is about him. Mm -hmm. I mean, it must be 95% of the articles you read really are about, are about him. Right. Um, where, where does that go? Is that healthy? I don't know how the government can function if they're all tied up in investigations uh, and dealing with him one way or the other on political issues uh, and, and following his, um, his Michigas all around town. Uh, I, I, I don't like that word. So is the government functioning properly? No. Is the Congress functioning? They seem to be spending all their time on him. And the press seems to be spending all its time on him. We are in kind of a spasm, a convulsion over this administration. Am I right? Yeah. Temporarily. I think the, I think the House of Representatives is focusing specifically on some very important things they did want to investigate. Um, but they know that if they spend all the time, they won't get reelected two years from now. So I think that's right. going to be very short-lived, and I think you're going to start seeing legislation being passed and then sent to the Senate, and we'll see if those bills languish in the Senate, and then that will be reported on. Yeah, we need to get back to an ordinary business as usual kind of legislation, legislative process yeah. in Congress. I don't think we're addressing. Um, and one last thing is, um, you know, I heard on the way in that there's a big push over um, you know, single-payer health care in this country. Um, such as has been discussed for a long time, and including uh, uh, Sa Sanders uh, a couple of years ago. Um, what's, what's the chances of that? The Democrats seem like they're relatively speaking united over it. I think they got some kind of program going, and, and it's actually very appealing to, should be appealing to everyone, or at least most people. Um, is, it, is that got traction, or is that, is that a dead duck? We're polarized. We're a polarized yeah. nation. We're a polarized Congress um, when cows fly. <laughs> okay, let's, let's, leave it, let's leave it there. But, you know, it, it seems to me that we're spending all our time, and the important thing for the government and, and, and every member of the Congress should recognize this, is to get back to business and do business and do policy and do legislation and depoliticize, uh, you know, helping people and, and doing the right thing for the country. And, yeah. We, we, we need to get back to that. I hope I hope, I hope so too. we recognize that. Well, I hope we can finish what's happening in these investigations into Trump because I would hate for them to just walk away from it and say, well, we have other stuff to do now because I think it's pretty important that the truth about who he is be really set in stone. You think there's, uh, you think there's momentum building for an impeachment right now? Oh, goodness, yes. I think so, absolutely. Momentum, but people talking not facts. About momentum, but not facts yet. Not enough facts. Right. Not enough so, facts yet. So, but I mean, they're kind of are. But... As soon as they can prove all the stuff Cohen said, it is. I mean, campaign finance laws, that he's not, he has not de-invest, no, disinvested, what's the word I need to say? Um, the emollients clause, he's right. totally blown that one out of the water. There's all kinds of facts and evidence for that. That's an impeachable offense right there. The only thing that's going to work is the really, the really um, serious ones that, the high crimes. Right. Connect them. Yeah. Connect the high them. crimes. The practical connect ways. Them to it won't Russia. be the small stuff because they won't get enough support for it. But right. if it's the high crimes that are, you know, that would show something really serious, I think even the Republican senators are going to have to say, we have to do our, oath. we have to do our duty to the oath of the constitution. Right. And I think that will happen, but it has to be serious. Right. Well, and the other possibility is that the Republicans are not going to leave, you know, uh, leave the ship. Uh, they're going to stay solid. Yeah. Um, we'll keep them. Thirty-eight percent was still with Nixon. Didn't he have thirty-eight percent? Depends on how surprising the Mueller investigation is. How shocking it well, is. That's what I say. The high, the high crime. Where it really plays, no matter what happens in the interim, yeah. it really plays is in the twenty twenty elections. Right. Because that's you know there's a fair chance that the Mueller investigation will have its most significant effect in the twenty twenty elections. Right. Uh, and maybe and maybe there's a benefit in having it delayed <laughs> delayed until you know because people Before. forget right if, if, you, if you put it out today it's it's still by 2020 it's 2020 yeah, right. you know how people forget but that would be political gamemanship and we wouldn't want that <laughs>
<laughs> we live in a new time. We do. Thank you, Tim. Thank you so Thank much, Jay. Cynthia Sinclair. Thanks, Jay. Next week, Trump week. You'll okay, see. Okay.